There you go. We're all happening. I'm hoping. I, I just got to double check. I thought I turned the sound on, and I'm fairly sure I did too. There you go. All happening. Well, good. Whatever it is to you. Morning, afternoon, evening, good night. Let me just pop the chat out so I can see what's happening out there. My goodness, it's warm in here. I've got the air conditioner. I'm just going to turn it up a tad, I think, because it is not doing what I would like it to do. So let me just turn the aircon up or down, depending how you look at it, and we'll get into it. Gee, I think I'll, I'll have it here. There you go. That's, if that's too noisy, do let me know. Chad, how you going, mate? How did you go with that chest of drawers? I don't see there be a problem with it at all. Looks good. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that first bit with the uh, email. It just filed too big or something strange like that. Okay, first of all, I'm going to finish off this Q-Rack I made yesterday because I was on a stream a little while back and uh, a couple of weeks ago and someone texted me and said, would you like a pool table? And I thought, no, I don't really think so. But there again, we took it. And we have not looked back since. We're having an absolute ball. So with this one, if I can do it without poking stuff, your cues just fit in there like that. No clips. It's all just done with um, force a bit holes. And I just want to finish that off. I'll actually do a video of how I made it. I need to get some matho first, but I'll work on it this way. Good on you, mate. Good to see. Um, well, yeah, I, I, what I want to do, I have on the side, see if we can get that one going. Yeah, I've screwed it and it's got ugly holes. So what I've done is cut out some ebony pegs and I'm going to, or plugs, I mean, and I'm going to put them, as soon as I get my screen back, I'm going to put them in the screw holes to cover it up. So that's what I'm going to start to do. Then we'll move on to something else. And then I'll come back to this again. Let me... I'll just put this in here first. Actually, I think it's going to be better if we do it this way. If it will let me. I don't know if it'll let me. No, it won't let me. I'll have to do it this way. There we go. And I'm going to do an oil finish on it. So, first things first, we'll glue these in with a little bit of tight bond. That's the downside of the rock. I could sell these if anyone wanted them. But how do you transport it? Because if you send it flat pack, it means someone's got to put it together the other end. And I have found that is fraught with danger. But I might look at how we can send it through the mail. chat in a minute I'll just bang these ones in and who else is slid in it's John at the moment oh. Oh. 
Oh, yes, it. I made these plugs quite um, big compared to the size of the hole they go in. But I just thought it looks nice. That's going to be a tight squeeze in there. Brenda, good day. I used to put a timer up, but now I think I might as well just get straight into it and get started. Hey Wombat, how you going mate? So these um plugs that I've cut out, it was just, it was a cheap little plug cutter, if I can find the packet, I did have it around here, it might still be in the drill press, hang on, I'll just, I'll go out with that, and there it is too, look at that. And my drill died, my drill has died. That's it there. I think it was about eight dollars or something or other from the big box warehouse. Uh, it works fine, but it's it's for eight dollars. You can't expect too much. Um, and I was cutting plugs out of ebony, which isn't advisable with a cheap plug cutter, but it works. It works. That's the main thing. Oh, here you go. That was it there. So if you're making something and you want to cover up the screw holes, that is the way to do it with a plug cutter. And then I could, if I wanted to, um, made the plugs the same as the material I made the Q stand out of, but I just thought it looks nicer with a bit of contrast in there. That's why I'm using ebony. And I'm not using too much of it because, as you know, ebony's not the cheapest timber in the world. It's tough, though. Oh, John, I'm watching you on mute right now, putting back. <laughs> That's all right, my God, never make any sense anyway. So, thank you. Eagle Nest, g'day! Like the queue. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, as I, I don't know if you were there when I just said um, last week or the week before I was doing a stream and I got a text from someone that I know and they said, do you want a pool table? And I thought, no, not really. But it has revolutionised our life. Uh, we're not watching much TV. We're all coming together. We're all having a lot of laughs and it is just the best thing so with the pool table I've got all the accessories I do have my own cue this actually was my father's cue um, and as soon as he found it we packed it away so I'm, I'm thrilled to be using that again and I thought we need a cue stand so I Looked around at a couple of snooker shops because Anthony wanted a queue for Christmas, so we went around some snooker shops and looked at queues. And I looked at queue holders, and they're all pretty much the same, you know, with the brass clips with the 
plastic guides. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll make one using those. And then I thought, that's going to cost me 20 bucks for the clips. I've got all this timber here. Why don't I use the timber I've got? So that was it. I came down yesterday at about 9 o'clock, and I think by about 3 o'clock I'd designed and worked out. I'll show you my design in a minute. I'll designed it and worked it out and had it. Made by two. And... Um, That was it. So I put it up in the lounge room. That's where we've got the pool table set up. And we used it yesterday. And then today I thought, I will come down and... Is that, have I lost that thing off my microphone already? Ah. There's a little foam thing that goes over the top of the microphone. That takes out a lot of external noise. So I shall... Look for it in a tick. Let me just put these two home. Then I thought I'd come down today and finish it off, and I thought, well, I might as well stream it. Okay. And then I'm going to oil finish it with tongue oil, I think. Okay, so we'll just put that to one side for a moment. Get this chopping board I'm meant to do. Oh, you rotten thing. This is... G'day, Ray! This is for um, a lady up the road that owns the best cake shop I've ever been to, and she's lovely, and she really looks after us. I've got to see if I can find that little phone top for me. Microphone. It annoys me when I haven't got it on. I'll catch up, then I'll have a look. There we go. Well, let me just have a look for it. No, it's annoying me. Wait a minute, I'm just going to disappear from sight down here on the floor because, as you all know, everything that I have eventually ends up on the floor. But apparently... Not that. I've ordered some more today because I knew I was getting low. It's funny, I can have one on and it will last for ages. And then all of a sudden I'll do about 10 of them in a very short period of time. Let me just have a look over here, see if we've got any more over here. I'm just moving the lights. I think that might have been the last one. Well, that's a pity. I'm sure I'm sure one will turn up sooner or later. That is a nuisance. There's a microphone, but I've already pinched one off of that. All right, so I apologise if the sound isn't as clear as it normally is. It's because I haven't got... my windshield on. Oh, I thought... I thought I found one, but it wasn't. It was a hole in the bench. Oh, well. Stefsky 
G'day, Jared. How are you? Okay. Bearded Fisherman. Hello. John, g'day. BG, g'day. Ray, g'day. <coughs> oh, yeah, John, we've just um, had it happen in Australia again. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping with a great amount of hope, determination and fingers crossed and everything else that my son can come up at Christmas. Um because he wants to be in Dad's shed and make some stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. If he is, we might do a might do a stream with the young fella. Chewy! Good day, mate! Um, love to see you make a bandsaw box. I'd love to see me make a bandsaw box. We might do it. I've never done one before. I, I had a mate that was... I'm still looking for these foamy things. Um, I had a mate that used to make them, so I didn't feel the need to make them because Ray had made them for me. But anyway, we might, we might look at that in the new year. i tell you what I am into at the moment. I use resin work. I um, wasn't a fan of it. And then I started playing around. It took me three litres of resin to work out how to do it so I didn't waste it and that can be an expensive exercise so I will do a video about resin work and the pitfalls that I found because a lot of people you see on YouTube they're doing phenomenal work absolutely superb really creative imaginative excellent but they don't tell you what can go wrong. It's just, oh, I've just poured this and I'm going to do the air. Yeah, fantastic. I tried that. It didn't work out. So I'll do one warts and all. Uh, I've got to do one, um, 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 yeah, beginning of January, but I want to do one on my channel as well. So we can all have fun together. I'm still looking for that foam thing. Because it annoys me when I haven't got it. But it doesn't look like I'm going to win today. Anyway, there you go. Ah, so bandsaw box, it's on the list for 2021, Chewy. What's your thought process for choosing what finish to use on different projects? Uh, Sharik, it, look, it depends. It really does. So you've got to take into account... Is it going to be inside? Is it going to be outside? Is it a new piece or is it a reproduction piece? Is it going to be used in a wet area or a dry area? Is it something that is going to be used often or not very often? Do you want to go traditional? Do you want to go um, not traditional? So looking at all those things, my preferred finish always is in furniture is French polishing, which is shellac. shellac. But it's definitely not the most practical one. The other one which I really, really like and I've shared uh, in the previous stream is satin acrylic. I put shellac down as a sand sealer, then satin acrylic, and then I buff it with a um, cutting compound. I use Brasso, which seems to work really nice, and the wax finish over the top, that way it looks as if it's old. But it hasn't got that. I don't like the toffee apple finish, the really bright, glossy, shiny stuff. I don't like that. This pool cue uh, stand I'm doing, I'm going to use an oil finish on that because it doesn't get handled. It's inside and uh, it's just a nice natural finish. So it depends on what you're making, how much is going to be used and where it's going to be kept. If you give me some hints, I'll give you some ideas. There you go. Hope that answered that one for you. Who was that? Uh, Sherrick. I hope that answered for you. Daniel, good morning. It's not down your... Oh, is it? Oh, no. oh, it is too. Oh, go to the top of the class. BG, you're, a, you're a, just a star. Look at that. Me bra caught it. Hang on. <laughs> Uh, give me a bit of... I've, I've just bought another um, 
Sorry for the sound. Ah, oh, that's... I'm happy now. It's, it's time for a coffee. I can relax. I, I might loosen the apron down a bit then, because that might be doing it, eh? Well, it didn't end up on the floor. Ah, come here. There we go. Oh, that, oh, mate, BG, you made my day. I'm going to have a coffee on the strength of that. That's it, coffee time. Oh, this have I got any milk here. Oh, I've got milk here too and it hasn't curdled. Uh, I'll just put that in there and I'll have a cold one. And I might have, might have, might have a squirt of butterscotch as well. Because I'm feeling good. There you go. Um... Oh, you can hear me now, John. Well, that, that's good. Uh, dear. Yeah, I hope he can come too. Mate. I was talking to him this morning. He wants some, wants some more tools. Uh, this was lovely. This was lovely. I said, well, mate, what do you want? And he told me. I said, yeah, okay. Um, I'm just looking at myself. My mum didn't dress me this morning, you can tell. There you go. Uh, he wants a bandsaw, and I said, yeah, no drums, I'll pick you up one. I said, do you want to come shopping, or do you want me to pick it up? And do you know what he said? It melted this old dad's heart, that did. He said, no, Dad, can you pick it up before I get there? And that means more time in the shed with you. Isn't that lovely? That made my day. I'm happy. Uh, John... Malinky. He's, he's, oh, I'll check him out, BG. Good morning, Dave. Elf. Uh, as el, elf. 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 Newish viewer. Love the chat. Well, love to have you on. Welcome to the chat room. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, dear. All right. Now. Whilst that thing's drying over there, we'll put this... I, I don't know if I want an extra. Do I want something light up the middle? I don't know. Oh, I was humming and ahhing to put a, a light piece up the middle and then I could... How would that look? Light... Yeah, I might do that. All right. You thought me into it. Let's just cut... Knock that off. I'm going to rip a couple of these bits. Come over to the saw, everyone. We'll go and do it there. Watch me. What's happening? It's just coffee, you, make, now. Uh, that the one? There you go. Where can I put this one? Oh, I'll see if I can bring it around this way. La -da 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 -da. Oh, don't tell me I didn't. Be, I did put a coffee thing in there, I'm sure. <laughs> I didn't. How many times have I done that? Not <laughs> I just, I just wondered why my coffee machine wasn't working, and I, I didn't put the thing in it again. Oh dear. All right, let's go over to the saw. And this will show you how you can make something pretty plain look pretty special. one off. Rip a couple of these.
Bada bum bum. Badi dee dee. Bada bum bum. Bada bum bum. Alright. So I'm going to break, break the monotony of that up. And you don't need a lot of a different colour to make something a little bit different from the mundane. Oh. There you go. Is that coffee done? What's going on? Gee whiz. Okay, now that, that's a... I don't know, that might be too big, is it? Can you have chopping boards too big? I don't know. And what we'll do to break that up is... So what I've done is just put some oak in there. So one strip there, one strip there. But to really bring it out, I'm going to put a layer of Jarrah veneer either side of that and in between these two bits. And Jarrah is a really dark red colour. And it just gives it something a little bit different. But before I do that, I have to sort it out. This will get um, put through the... I don't know, is it too big? I don't know. I really don't know. What's a good size for a chopping board? Oh, look, I've only made a thousand of them. Three hundred. Oh. Depends how much cooking you do, I suppose, isn't it? <whistles> now I like that. That's a good size. If it's too big, you can always cut it down. That's that's my theory. And I think I've got one biscuit left, one bicky left in the fridge. That's it. The old pencil multi-tool. Oh dear. <laughs> Wrong channel for that, BG. What uh, you will notice, I take your point, BG, actually, but if you notice when I was cutting, I had this finger in the groove of the fence, so I know that's my push stick, if you like, and then I'm just pushing through. If I'm cutting something else, whoop, I need a push stick, I'll use a push stick, but generally, for me anyway, and I'm not advocating this as a solid practice, but it's one I've been using for about 30 years. If you've got a trench in your fence like I have, you run this finger up and then you're safe. I wouldn't go freehand between the fence and the blade, but having that locked against the um, internal wall of the fence is quite safe. But everything with woodwork, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. Hey boss! Here you go! 
down, stuff. <laughs> Look at this drop. I dropped something. Oh. Measuring tape. Oh, that was, that was the other thing my son said. He said, Dad, I've got all these beautiful tools now to do work with, but I haven't got a tape measure. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that wasn't a purpose shot. You want to have a look at some bee boxes, Boz? Yeah, I'll give you another shot of jobs that have to be done. There you go. I can never be accused of being tidy. <coughs> I suppose you can. Oh, oh I'm thinking, I, I don't know. It depends what you do in the kitchen, doesn't it? That's a nice size, though. That's about 320, I reckon. Three, hey, how good am I? Look at that. On the money, I go there. And if you look at that, that's 320. Oh, calibrated eyeballs. How does it get better than this? Toby, good day, mate. How are you? Going to just lurk as my sister just got... <laughs> Yeah, I like to come down here to see what I'm going to say as well. Oh, that's getting technical, BG. Wider than your biggest knife is long and just longer than twice the length of your... <sighs> nah. What, what looks good? Oh, this is a present. Doesn't matter. Oh, no. I hope that wasn't live. Yuck. What bandsaw are you planning with you? Oh, just a, a little one. I was going to get him one like mine, which is over there, Laguna BX14. But um, we've measured the floor space and he's renting. And he said a small one would be better, I think, Daddy-o. So I'm going to just get him a 10-inch uh, one, a 250. <clears throat> which has got a smaller footprint. And as luck would have it, my, as I said before, my, my drill press after 38 years died yesterday. Well, it hasn't totally died. The uh, bearings in the head um, are starting to seize. And I must admit I was pushing it. So if we're going to go and buy a bandsaw, I might as well go and get a drill press at the same time. What I'm doing here is I'm organising all the, I don't like that, that's a 4H pencil, all the grain going in the same direction. Then when I put it through the thicknesser, it is not going to tear out. Or... If you don't have the benefit of a thicknesser and you're using a hand plane, you won't get tear out either. And then when you've got it all going the right way, Mark it. Well, first of all, I'm just going to have a look at the colours. Might just give it a quick spray. And we'll just have a look at the... Oh, the colours are all pretty... Pretty similar, so I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. I think we might swap that one with that one. Uh, 
and that's looking pretty good. All right. So once you've done that, what I do is try, I go through boxes and boxes of pencils in this place, truly. I buy three or four dozen boxes at a time and in a very short space of time they have disappeared. I've tried using those clutch pencils uh, but I just don't like them. I much prefer a pencil pencil. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to mark down there. So now I know, oh I might as well number, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I gotta tell you, I'm playing around with making. Oh, that is just not working. That aircon. Let me put that on auto as well, and we'll bump the speed up one. Um, on the, I don't know if you are familiar with the old-fashioned rotary snooker scoreboards. Their oh, cabinets about that long and they've got a cylinder in there with all the numbers on it and a little marker that you slide up and down the front of the cylinder and you keep score and it goes from 0 to 20, from 21 to 21 to 40, from 41 to 60, from 61 to 80, from 81 to 100, right? And I thought, I'm going to start making some of those. So I, I worked out how I could do it. My biggest challenge was getting the number board. So I've um, found someone who can do that for me, but I had to supply the printed material so they could print up the numbers and then I'll put them on a roll. And I took them up there on Saturday and they said, yeah, they'll be ready on Monday. Oh, terrific, looking forward to that. Then last, uh, then Saturday night, I thought, I'll oh, just check this. Yeah, you can't be stupid. I mean, I didn't have to write from one to a hundred. No, I had 21, 22, 23, 34, 25. And I'd done 21 of the flipping things. So I had to sit on Photoshop and change them all. And hopefully, get it up to them before they did it, which I did. So I was saved. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing those. So I'll bring you in when I start doing those as well. Mm. Hey, Tony, long time no see. I hope you're doing well. Ah, wishing you and the very best of Christmas spirit and cheer and holidays and Everything else to you too, my dear. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a mayhem here. The other, oh, Susie wanted me to go to the shops. She said, oh, can you just go and pick something up from the music shop? I said, if there's not too many people there, because I, I really don't like crowds. And, oh, I reckon you could have fainted and you wouldn't have fallen down. Just so many people. Still, I did get it done, what she wanted done. Um, what I'm doing now at the moment is just cutting up this veneer, which is being a bit ornery. Uh, and I want four pieces. Sharpen that up a bit too, I think. Ow! I think it's sharp. I just, I just cut myself. 
There you go. Well, it went into focus then, did it? It's a rotten thing, this. Sometimes it goes into focus and sometimes it, it doesn't. And today's Monday, it's, it feels like a Sunday. But there again, I, I reckon I had about three Fridays last week. It was weird. I kept on saying, is it Friday today? She said, no, it's Wednesday. Oh, okay. Next day's Friday today. No, it's Thursday. Then Saturday, I don't know what I thought Saturday was, but I didn't think it was Saturday. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Make his mark. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and we had torrential rain last night. My wood turning shed got flooded, which I was not thrilled about because I thought I'd fix the problem. But when I saw how much water was coming down last night, I it was about that far up the roller door on the outside. So I guess I'm lucky it didn't do too much damage. No, oh, I'm just forever putting drains in. Got to the stage I got sick of digging them, so I went and bought myself a jackhammer. That's great. Oh, it's an electric one, so I can go anywhere in the yard. I just take the truck with me and fire up the generator and I can dig holes. Good fun. I'll go and get another stick of that. Wait on, I'll be back in a minute. <coughs> or in a second, because it's out here. Uh, how many do I want for? Should be able to get it out of that. Oh. Here we go. Oh, what have we got? What have we got? Uh, is that a saw stop table you are you? No. No, that's a Laguna sliding, uh, platinum sliding dovetail. I have, I have thoughts on saw stop. And I'm going to leave it at that. Ah. Ba -bum, ba -da -da -da. Ba -dum. I've got two. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't happen too often, me concentrating. <laughs> but sometimes I do. Uh, I wish I could concentrate on where I put things. No, I think that'll do. That will do. No, getting back to that snooker thing, I was really happy with that because I got the idea. I was going to show you the drawing I did. Oh. Yeah, so that was yesterday I came down. Well, I date my stuff. So when I pop my clogs and the kids come down, they can look through the, my book and go, oh, I remember Dad made that. Oh, that was for that. Oh, he never made that. Oh, he didn't. Oh, there's a music stand. Look, he didn't finish that. 
Um, that's uh, stylized. That's an arm I want to do on my dining room chairs, which I'm building a new dining room suite next year. So I don't know if I can do it, but I'd like that to be ebony in there and oak on the outside. So there we go. We'll see. We will see. So what? Yes, I got the idea of that snooker stand last night. And it was so nice to come down yesterday with nothing that I had to do and potter. I think I'm going to have 21, 2021 is going to be the year of pottering for me. I just love it. Now, I don't know if I said last time, but I recently had a new granddaughter and I didn't make any noise about it because there was a lot of issues. But it appears all is well. Uh, she was released from hospital. She spent the first two and a bit weeks of her life in hospital, which wasn't very nice. But she's home now with her mum and dad. And... I'm looking forward to seeing her one of these days because unfortunately they live in a different state and we have lockdowns again so it won't be for a while but I saw um, on eBay I saw this beautiful pink tool bag for a child and it had a big buckle on it and the buckle said BT, born tough. So <laughs> I'm thinking of getting that for her for her first birthday and then she can come down on the <laughs> come down and help me in the shed. So it's two granddaughters I've got and two grandsons. So Raven, my love, if you are watching, Papa sends his love. Okay, let's see. I reckon this is going to work. I want to put one red strip in there. Come here, you. One strip in there, one in there, and one in there. And you'll be amazed the difference those four strips make. It really is uncanny. All right. I think... We'll do this lot first, then we'll do that lot. I won't glue this up in one shot. Purely because the glue can go off too quick. But oh, I will do it in the one take, as it were. So I'll do this bit here, and then while that's drying, I'll do this bit here, and then when I finish this bit, I'll put this bit and that bit together, and bingo. If I'm not strapped for time, I would actually, um, good. Oop, hang on. Yeah, if I'm not strapped for time, I'll do it in two halves and let it cure and then put the two halves together. But they, they, they're not going to move Christmas Day just because I'm slack. So what can I tell you? 
So, let me get a bucket up here. Oh, oh and I'll pull a, a brush out. And wet rag. And, 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 and. Go and find a, a jar. That would be good, but if I can't, that wouldn't surprise me. I'll use that. Will that work? Oh. Da -dee -dum -dum -dum. Hang on. Let me go out here and see what I've got out here. Oh, it is muggy out here. It is so, so very muggy. That looks as if it might do the job. I'm actually starting to get green in the backyard. It hasn't been green for months. Ah, oh, look at that. Champion. Champignon. Okay, where have we got here? Oh. Get a bit of the old glue happening. I'm using tight bond two. Now, a lot of people say I use tight bond, should use tight bond three. But I got this from the horse's mouth. And the guy that actually brings tight bond into Australia said, no, you're much better for chopping boards to use tight bonds too. And I don't know why, but Andrew, I believe you, so I'll do it. Okay. Um, I, you don't have to, but I put a little bit of water in here. You're allowed to break down by 10% if you want. Um, I just put a little bit in it just, it increases the drying time and also it allows the timber to spread a lot easier. <laughs> A shed full of rubbish on the floor and I can't find the right bit of rubbish. There you go. So I'll just give that a bit of a stir. So I might put a little bit more water in there. I can't tell you exactly how much I put in, but to me, I just do it until I get a consistency that I like. And that, that'll come off a broom. <laughs> That's a serious chopping board if you need to put the glue on with a broom. Okay. Here we go. Where are we up to, I'll say? Uh, well, today is Saturday night for me. Sunday night. I, Sunday, I was playing pool Sunday night. Let's see, where are we up to? Um, Tony came in. David's at a sore stop. No. BG, Ashley OCD just kicked in. Oh. She's flipping, you've made an odd number of sections. Yeah, you tell, tell her the... Uh, what, what do you call it? Symmetry is evil. Someone told me that. Uh, Graham Priddle. Check him out online. He does the most amazing work. Uh, wood turning and um, uh, carving and what have you. And I was at a, a friend's place once when we were doing a workshop and someone said, you know, should I make it even? even? He said, no. Symmetry is evil. And look, I tend to agree with him. 
If you try to get something symmetrical and you miss it, it is obvious. Whereas if you have it asymmetrical, you can have an imperfection in there, but because it's asymmetrical, you, oh, it doesn't pick it up. Also, also, who was that that said that? Uh, BG. Yeah, but the beautiful thing is by having an odd number, it is balanced because you can tell, Ashley, it's got a white bit either side. And if I hadn't put the white bit in the middle, it wouldn't have had such a dramatic impact. So all is right with the world. And hey, Ashley, thanks for watching if you're there. Does anyone else notice how precariously close that jar is to the edge? And running the, op the, the chance of falling off. So I'm going to move it over there. I don't need drama in my life. So enough of that. See how easy that spreads, and I really haven't diluted the adhesive qualities at all, I don't believe. And as you all know, I like to double glue. That way I'm assured that there is sufficient glue on all surfaces. I'm quite happy doing this because I'm new. This is blackwood, and I've had this blackwood. For a fair few years now, just sitting in the yard, drying, and now it's <clears throat> air-dried sufficiently that I can use it, which makes me happy chappy. Well, just got to watch that when you're using these cheap brushes at the bristles don't come out. It's not really a problem when you're doing something like a chopping board, but if you're doing marquetry or veneer work and it's not paper backed, it can be a real problem because it can actually show through on the veneer. So you just got to be a little bit mindful when you're using it. Have a chat as soon as I finish this bank. <clears throat> if you're new to the channel and you do have any woodworking questions, please don't hesitate, just ask and I'll stop whatever I'm doing and do my best to answer it. I got an email the other day from some mob, I won't say who it was, because I'm, I'm sure they're just trying to make a quid like everyone else. And um, apparently I could sign up and become a, an online expert. There you go, <laughs> me, an expert. Yeah, right. X in, has been a spur to drip under pressure. Um, and it said that I can do... One-on-one uh, one -on -one interviews or uh, talks, whatever, if someone's got a particular problem with their woodwork, 
they can contact me direct and I charge them money and spend time talking to them. And I looked at it and I thought, why would I do that? I, I like helping people for nothing. Um, there are certain things, sure, if I'm running a workshop, I will charge for that. But if you just want to know something, you've got to be, I don't know. Oh, no, well, I won't even pass the comment because people most likely are doing it and making an income out on it and they're charging for their specialities, which I think is fair enough. But for me, no, I like just helping people the best I can in real time. So I, I sort of looked at it and I, I went to sign up and that's what hit me. So why? Look, I'm running a stream and if anyone wants to know anything, they just ask me on the stream and I'll tell them. So there you go. Okay. Oops. Now whilst it's at this stage where it's still movable. Make sure that you have all the right bits of timber pointing up. <clears throat> if you've got one backwards, now is the time to change it. Well, you can. Okay, that'll I reckon that'll do us for the moment. Might just put on the end. on the bottom which is good. Let's leave that. Then we'll have a chat and we'll do the next the next one. Ha! Alright. Chef Morris! Hello! How are you? I always make my evening work. Ah oh, that's nice. Thanks Anthony. <clears throat> Good to know. So you're working tonight or are you, you're watching me in the kitchen or what? Oh dear. Now is that going to be... Uh... Yeah, we'll do that. It's always nice when you're on too, Anthony. Okay. Um, ba -da -ba -da. Before I forget, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and everything else. Whatever you can say or can't say, I don't care. Happy Christmas, Happy New Year. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to have a semi rant. No, not a big rant. And it's not my intention to offend anyone. If you do, well, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry I said what I said. I'm sorry you took it that way. Surely, if you say something in the spirit of kindness, humanity, Love with the best of intentions. How the heck can people get offended? Honestly, I mean, you say, oh, happy Christmas, America, have a great time. I'm not telling you to go and bury your dog in the backyard or something like that. I'm, I'm trying to be friendly. I'm conveying a spirit of human connectiveness. Oh, no. <laughs> I could. But they'd ban me if I really had a good rant about that. But no, it's true, isn't it? Look, Bob, all right, he's a dog. I can say anything to him, depending how I say it, he'll wag his tail or he won't. I, <laughs> you're a mongrel of a dog. I'm, I'm going to take you to the vet. 
Now, depending how I say that, I say, oh, you're a mongrel of a dog, I'm going to take you to the vet. He goes, oh, I'm excited. But I can say, you want some cheesecake or not? I've got a chop here for you. And he'll go, oh, and he'll leave the room. It's how you say I believe it should be the intent of the deliverer, not so much the translation of the receiver, that is the important thing. This ends the lesson. Yeah, I like that. The intent, of, the intent of the transmitter, not the interpretation of the receiver. And there's more things. There's, I'm off. There's more things, isn't there? There's body language. He said, oh, no, I think you're great. Oh, that's a really good job. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, no, you, oh, yeah, I'm sure you'll sell some of those. I, I mean, that conveys the words that I'm saying are hogwash. But I'm saying, hey, that's a great job. They're fantastic. Oh, you should sell some of those. That's terrific. Virtually, I can't remember the exact same words, but virtually the same words, but one undoes someone or destroys them or makes them feel bad and the other one picks them up because it's all with the intonation, the inflection in the voice, the body language. I used to teach body language when I was, when I was a professional speaker. There you go. Tone, temper, and what's the other one? Tone, temper and tambor. They're the three things when you're talking tone, temper and tambor. In other words, do you have a happy voice? Is it pleasant? Are the words well spaced? And is it meant with warmth? Or say exactly the same thing, say it fast, say it with a sharp voice, and changes the meaning. Hey, I've got to glue the board up. <laughs> Susan, I'm losing it. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, where am I? To Steve, long time no see, caught you live, yeah. Is that far back there? Hey, Matthew, I'm well, mate, I'm well. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry my shed got flooded too. Today. It happens, it happens monotonously, uh, but they're big rains. I, I, I don't know, I reckon in, it would have been less than 15 minutes, my blacksmith area was ankle deep in water, the floods would have been shattered and my tanks would have been full. It came down. I reckon if you got a dam and turned it upside down, it wouldn't have rained any harder. But anyway, this shed's dry, so that's the main thing. Uh, the dining room, I'm actually going to, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a TV show out of it because I've been asked to do, for those who didn't know, I've been asked to do more TV shows for um, Woodworking Masterclass. And oh, I thought making the dining room suite might be good because it's not going to be fine furniture. I'm, I'm tossing up. I can make it fine furniture if I want, um, but I've got some beautiful slabs of white oak or American oak in one of my sheds. And uh, they're 400 wide, three metres long, about 42 mil thick, so what's that, inch and a half, maybe. And because they've just been air dried, they do have a bit of movement in, in splits. And now I can machine them down or I can actually go and buy uh, dress lumber and make the table nice and flat. But I quite like this uh, medieval, rustic, honest, there you go, honest furniture. So I'm, I'm looking at making the table just using the slabs and planing off the high bits. If there's any big splits in it, I'll put um, bow tie joints in there. Maybe do some blacksmithing. And then the chairs are going to be Glastonbury chairs, which is my favourite chair to make. And that picture I showed you before, that's the arm of the Glastonbury that I want to um, design, see if I can make. So, a few challenges there because there's long grain and end grain and what have you. But if I can get it done, I will be, um, I will be happy because my wife will be happy. There you go. All right, now what's happening here? That's going the wrong way. You concentrate, Stephen. Oh, at this point in time, the music stand. Came in. 
No, it's gonna get made. I was playing. I was playing cool with Theo the other night, and it did come up. So I should get him over here. We can have another joint stream. Uh, I agree, Tony. I agree, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I think honestly, you got to make 2021 the best year you can in your head. Don't bring over. It was a, a great, great um, expression. I, I've forgotten, forgotten who the, the, the speaker was, but he said, what is it? Um, worry, yeah. Worrying is bringing tomorrow's clouds over today's sunshine. So, yeah, don't bring the clouds of 2020 into 2021 and project them. Just, we'll, we'll, hey, day by day, that's the way we got to live. Pink tool bag, yeah, very pretty. Oh, I love that. Oh, thanks, Tony. I'll pass them on. Alan, good day, mate. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no, it, it has pelted, BG. Okay, all right, let's get back to this thing. How you going, Alan? I've been loving your burnings you've been doing. Oh, that's what I've got to do too. I've got to get a, a, a poker, what's it? I've got my phone, Lord. I'll do it now. I'll um, plug another channel here. There's a, a young bloke, doesn't live too far away from me. And he does the most amazing epoxy things. You, you think, where did that come from? Well, I was just thinking when I saw Alan, because he does the most amazing pyrography work with um, Vikings and what have you. And I spoke to my son who's meant to be coming. This is a long-winded explanation. Who's coming up supposedly in a couple of days. And I said to him, would you like a burning kit for Christmas or whatever? And he said, yeah, that'd be cool. So I better go and pick that up tomorrow when I pick his band score up. But I've got jobs to do around the house. And if we're going out tomorrow, <laughs> I've got to empty the trailer today, which quite frankly, I'm not looking forward to because it's full of stuff. <whistles> Gee, that coffee was nice. No, I won't. I'll have, did I? I've got to concentrate on what I'm doing here. I did that, okay. Oh. And I don't know about other um, countries in the world, but Australia, for reasons that are not apparent, apart from the obvious one, they can get more money out of us, have done away with registration stickers. So I cannot tell you when my cars are due for registration. And that was brought home the other day when Susie informed me my MX-5 ran out of registration two weeks ago. So I haven't been able to drive it. So I'm going to get that registered this week. Nothing better than if you want to get out, you get out in a nice open road with a top down in the convertible and just music blaring out. Who have we been listening to lately? I was listening to some Metallica in the shed yesterday. There you go. I thought, hey, this is good. Who's that? And it was Metallica. I said, You're kidding. I remember when I used to tell the kids to turn that rubbish off. So how times change.
Bada boom. I think that air conditioner is starting to work now. Oh, I watched a good movie last night, or the other day. Yesterday afternoon. That's right, because I went, I had a grandpa in that when I finished the cool pool rack, Q rack, which I'll get back to as soon as I finish this. Uh, what's it called? Survivor. And not the TV thingamajig or one. Had Pierce Brosnan in it. It was good. Okay. Coming down the sharp end now and I'm getting sticky fingers. Um, those of you that missed it, this is for... A lady up the road that runs the best cake shop I've ever, ever been to. It is extraordinary. And she always looks after us at the end of the day if there's any cakes left over and I happen to be up there buying something. She says, oh, do you want some cakes? We're only going to throw them out. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, that's lovely and I appreciate it. I really do. I've got some. Vanilla slices up in the fridge when I finish here. I'm going to go and introduce myself to one. But it's a bit like, oh, hang on, I've got some stew here. Do you want it? If not, I'll give it to the dog. Um, <laughs> it makes you feel good, doesn't it? You're one step before the garbage bin. Oh, and they made some Christmas Christmas cakes the other day and oh, I just had to have one. Oh. And then the kids found it, the grandkids found it. Oh, what's this? <laughs> she said, that's Papa's, don't touch it. Oh. There's cream buns over there. Oh, okay. So they hooked into the cream buns. So they, don't, they don't really miss out. Tell you what, I wish I had a childhood like these kids. No, I don't. I was talking to Anthony the other day. I grew up well, originally I'm from England, but I came out to Australia when I was nine and uh, moved to Sydney. And he asked me, what do you do? <clears throat> what did you do when you were a kid? And it was amazing when I just said, you know, what we used to do. You used to be able to buy a, a train ticket. It was called a City Circle Return for sixpence. Five cents. And that was it. That was our day. Saturday, you'd get on the train and you would literally ride the train all day. And providing you never left the station, it didn't matter. So you'd, you'd be just jumping from platform to platform. And in those days, there's none of this fairy blooming seal compartments when you move from one compartment to the next you've got a, a sheltered doorway no it was you open one one carriage to go to the next and you've got the coupling and there's a piece of chain there that's and we would spend hours just smelling the diesel and watching stuff go by it was the same um with the ferries because i lived on sydney harbour well not on the harbour i mean the house was on land but it was on the shores of Sydney Harbour, and I'd be fishing nearly every second day, and I had a little, um, a little eight-foot fiberglass dinghy that my dad had made, and a little two-horsepower. I think about it now; it was suicide. Little two-horsepower motor on it, and I used to go. I don't know how many miles it was, but right up to the top end of Sydney Harbour and the Catalina, the sea boats, oh, the sea boats, the seaplanes used to come in from Lord Howe Island and Norfolk Island uh, on dusk and you'd be sitting there and there was nothing, not like today, there was nothing on the harbour. Occasionally it'd be a ferry, but that would be it and you'd sit there and you'd watch these, well to me, 
massive seaplanes coming in and oh, it's just the best. And Anthony said to me, oh, Papa, he said, you, you had a great childhood. And the stuff we did, you know, we used to get into construction sites and, you know, play on heavy machinery and throw rocks and do all this sort of stuff. And if we'd got caught, we would have been in trouble. But nowadays, if you do that and something happens, you sue someone. I mean, I had my ears clipped and my backside kicked by many a person I never knew. All part of the growing process. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we'll leave this here like this for a little bit and just until that tacks off. Okay, all right. Um, I'll get back to the thing I stand and then we'll put those two bits together shortly. Oh, I'm going to get a drink of water and then I'll have a chat. Oh, that's lovely, that is, isn't it? You go and get... You go and get a drink of water and there's a cockroach leg in it. No cockroach, just the leg. Oh. Kind of makes you wonder how he lost the leg in the glass of water. Anyway. Oh. Hey, Julian. Let me get back up here. Oh, dear. Oh, that's good. Is uh, Matthew coming home for Christmas? Or is he, he stuck like everyone else? Yeah, I couldn't see the sense in getting rid of them, Ray. I'm sorry. They said, oh, but they cost a dollar. Well, tough. Our registration's going to pay for it. I didn't, I didn't notice a dollar dip in me rego when they stopped doing them. Oh, no, you don't, oh, you'd send it through the post. Yeah, well, we do get a mail, but the mail's... <laughs> I mean, the mail service here is terrific, Tony. It gets to the letterbox, but we do have issues getting it from the letterbox to the end user. Um... I, I am one of the I am one of the culprits. If I'm going out and I check the mail, I'll get it. And so I'm driving the truck. I'll get the mail thrown in the glove box of the truck. Then I might not drive the truck for a week. I'll drive another car and then I'm looking for something. Oh, there's a letter in there. Oh, it's for you. So that's what happens. Uh. I'll try that. Um, greeting from Greece. Greeting from Brisbane. Back at you. Australia. Ev. Arepetes? Arepetes, is it? I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce it, but thank you for, for joining the channel and having a go in the chat. <clears throat> Oh, that's, you can send me half of the discount you get because it just cost me an extra $70. Oh, I'm ticked. Now, I'll tell you what, one good turn deserves another, BG. You found me foamy things. <laughs> I'm happy to save you, Reggio. <clears throat> What have I, oh, well, the MX-5, oh, the MX-5 becomes a, a classic this year, it's 1991. And, I don't know, Susie's is a 2005, I think, and the truck's 2007. I did have a new car once, I bought a brand new one, never done it before, oh, I'm going to go and have a brand new car. Never, ever, ever am I going to buy a new car again. You lose so much money. 
Ah. Let me fill this up. Ba -da -ba -dum. Ba -ba -dum. That's nearly one finished. <laughs> yep, that's it. It's true. You think about it. Hey Andy, good to have you in, mate. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where, what it is now, but some restaurants now, they won't even let you take a doggy bag home. Because you take it, take it home, put it in the fridge and it goes off and then you see the restaurant. Load of rubbish. Well, we were talking about this the other day. Oh, there was something I was listening to, oh, I couldn't get over it. This <laughs> bloke, possibly a very nice person and, and trying to make a quid. That tastes much nicer with a cockroach leg. And he was talking about the pressure of when relatives come over or friends come over at Christmas and how important it is to clean your oven. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not high on my priority list. If people come around here, they generally want something for nothing. But if they come to see us, they come around to see us. I have never in my entire life had anyone come and visit us, no matter where we're living, walk into the house and pull the oven door open and go, oh, your oven's dirty. Anyway, he was, he was, <laughs> he was quite amusing. I was stuck in traffic. Um, where was I going with that? I was going somewhere. I'll get it back in a minute. Um, um, um. Yeah, that is great. Oh, uh, yeah, that was right. I got it. It reminded me. Ray, Ray. All right. So he's talking about that. And then the next best thing, apparently, is not only is your oven got to be clean, but you've got to clean your pantry. And everything that's out of date, you've got to throw away. That has been the biggest boon to the food industry I have ever seen in my life. What an absolute crock. There has to be people out there, has to be people, even my age or younger, that used to cut the mould off the cheese. Ah, the cheese has got mould on it. You can buy cheese, it's meant to be mouldy, it's okay. Cut it off with a knife. Oh no, we've got to throw it away. Oh, it's gone hard. Grate it and put it on a bit of toast and have cheese on toast. Oh, is it? The best way to tell if food's off, there's two ways, three ways actually, the first way, it doesn't smell right. Four ways. The second way, it doesn't taste right. The third way, you eat it and you don't feel very well. Or my favourite is you get someone else to eat it and if they don't feel very well, then you don't eat it. But you look at a date. They've got water. How can water go out of date? Used by... The only thing I can think of with that, the water doesn't go, yeah. oh, this water came from a, a 10 million year old uh, subterranean spring used within three weeks. The only thing I can think of is the container they put it in starts leaching toxic materials that aren't good for you within a short space of time. That's why you have to drink it. But for goodness sake, I can, I can remember getting... Um, I sure I can. I know it. No, I won't go there because I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I do know this isn't food. I can remember I was changing, changing wheel bearings in trucks when I was in the army and they were wrapped in the beautiful army olive drab, sticky, gooey, grease tape wrapper and they had 1944 printed on them. I mean, goodness gracious me. They eat 100 year, oh yeah, there's a go. If you have a 100 year egg, I wonder if it's got a best use by date for. 100 year old egg. What, what would you want a 100 year old egg for? I'll leave one out in the sun for a week, get into that. Now, what am I up to? Oh, here we go, we're back on the, we're back on the snooker rack.
My therapist said streaming is the best thing I can do for my blood pressure. No, <laughs> no, it's not true. I haven't got a therapist. But I just enjoy having fun. You've got to have fun. If you're not having fun, it's not worth doing. All right. Now I'm just going to knock these off. These are the little um, plugs. Now, normally, I would knock these off with a chisel, but not in this case. These are ebony, and ebony is very, very hard. So there's every chance, if I whacked it with a chisel, it would split. So I'm just using a finely set block plane. There you go. There you go, all down to nothing. Kill. Oh. Muddy diddy boom, muddy boom. Ah. Let me have a chin whack. I've seen that, yeah, and I've seen that one, uh, Alan, the double. Yeah, he's, well, he's an FBI agent or something or other, and the other guy's an assassin. But it's not as, it, as you would think. There you go. <sighs> oh, no, I, I realise that, Ray, but it's really, really nice to be on the, on the inn. Oh, it was. It was. It was awesome, Tony. I loved it. In fact, when the Sydney Opera House opened, whenever that was, I know it was. It was a while ago. I was there. I was there that day in my little eight-foot aluminium dinghy. I, I had the outboard, but I think I might have been rowing as well. And, um, yeah, I nearly, I nearly got swamped so many times by big cruisers that didn't care. Hang on, when was that? I've got to check that out. When did the Sydney Opera House open? Boom, ba -dum, boom. I'm, I'm just going to look it up. Someone most likely already typed it in. Da -da 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 -da. 1973. There you go. 1973. So that would have made me a young fella. 1973, how old would I have been then? 1973, what's it now? 1973. I would have been 18, 17. I would have been 17. There you go. I think the scariest thing was going under the Sydney Harbour Bridge in it. You don't realise how big the bridge is until you're right underneath it looking up. these things. There you go. Oh, I was working for a bank at 17. I was working for a bank. Oh dear. 
I'm just putting a bit of wax on the bottom to make it easier. Too plain. Oh, I'm all excited too. I'm getting some new beehives soon. Go outside. Got to make some more beehives as well. As I said, I could, <coughs> I could hurry this along and use a chisel, but I know that I can create a problem for myself if I did. So I much prefer to do it this way that takes a bit more time but really reduces the chance of having problems oh I got my air conditioner fix in the truck the other day too that was that was awesome I called into this place just to see if I could book it in and he was brilliant. He said, mate, put it in the end bay, I'll have a look at it right away. Yes, that's what I call service. And it's so nice to get in there and have cool air blowing on you. La da da di dum bum. Ba da bum bum bum. Did I tell you about the. I was going to plug another YouTube channel. I can't remember if I did. Ah! Some tear out. Um, yeah, this guy does most amazing epoxy work, and his channel is called Ben's Works. B E N S W O W O R K X No B E N S W O R X Ben's Works. Um I guess he'd only live about 20 Ks from me. So I contacted him the other day and see if he's interested in doing a um a collaboration project or coming on the show? I don't know. So we'll wait and see if we hear from him. I've learned a lot from him. Nearly there. Yeah. 
Yeah, so if I do decide to sell these, that's the challenge is how do I actually get them to the people that buy them because I suppose I'll, I'll just have to send them assembled and they're just going to have a crack at assembling them themselves. But to me, it's, it's extra work because it means I totally have to assemble it and then disassemble it. Which then you would think would make it more expensive because I'm doing twice the work. Oh, I don't know. We'll have that one. See, I'm not in shot anymore. Done. Now I think I will sand it. Just blow the dust off of that. That's 100, 180. I'll switch it around the other way. The rest of it was all um, sanded and finished before I did this bit here so the rest of it's all ready to put a finish on. So I'll go back to 100 grit. the edges but I'm not worried about the back 
because that's up against the wall. But the front, I don't know. I might just. Don't know. Well, I might just do that with a sanding block, I think. That'll be the, the go. On the sanding block. I had one here before. Here we go. And a bit of 320 might do. So I could use a power sander, but it won't be even. Um, because it's too powerful and if I go around here, I'm going to take chunks out that I don't want. So this is a hard block. It's got a bit of plywood on there. And I'm just, all I'm doing is just taking a very sharp edge off. That's all I want to do. Both sides. I might just do it to the back as well, but that's that, that's more for pride in workmanship than any aesthetic qualities. Whoops. Because I a bit like Mercedes, Mercedes Benz, you'll never feel a sharp edge. On a Mercedes, everything's just had the little sharpness taken off. So that's all I want to do here. And and let's face it, visually you do see things, but it's your sense of touch more than anything else that gives you feedback on if something's nice or not. If you look at something, it's beautiful, and then you rub your hand over and it's, it's coarse or it's rough or it's got a sharp edge or something that just doesn't feel nice, it will affect your whole opinion. And I might do the same here. That's your, no. Sharpness is off. I do want to put some feet on the bottom. I haven't worked out how I'm going to do that yet. And these tops, I think, if I can get that. Ah, oh, look at that. Where there's a will, there's a way. Um, these bits here, I think I'll just sham for those with a hand plane.
Let's have it set up. Knock the harsh corners off. Beautiful. Same to the other side. It's going to drop down, so we might as well. Oh, something just backfired. Knock this one off first. Still, when I concentrate, I'm quiet. It's so true, isn't it? I'll be with you in a tick. Let's do this last bit. I'm going to put some oil on it. Let me go back to the chopping board. I was going to put a shape on these, but because it was the first one that I built, I built it. Um, in such a way that it wasn't practical to go back and put a shape on the edge. But the next one I do, I will definitely put an angle or something on there to give it a little bit of pizzazz. I've got feet to do with it, <clears throat> but I'll fix those up later. Let's whack a bit of oil on it. See what it comes up like. What have we got? Hey Ian, Merry Christmas to you too, and stay safe as well. And Wombat. No, this, um, as you can see, it just sits like that up against the wall. What I'm going to do is put maybe a foot that'll come out 30 mil or an inch and a quarter uh, from here just to allow it not to tip forward. But up against the wall, it's pretty stable just as it is actually. I've, um, as I said, I had it up in the house last night and it didn't fall over and we were... Uh, Constantly reaching for the spider and the bridge. And it worked okay. All right, let me just blow some of this off so I don't get it all over my job. I'm using quick drying tongue oil. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, yuck. Yeah. We'll put it on and see what happens. It's got a lot of stuff on it, but... Oh, 
I don't know why. It's got a lot of muck coming out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all good. I'll show you. Um, so we'll do it in a tick. I'll do the outside just so you can see those. Uh, let's see if we can do it this way without making too much of a mess. Um, okay, I'll do these end bits so you can just see how it makes a difference having a contrasting timber as a plug. And that to me, that looks quite nice. As I said, you, you could quite easily have just used the uh, same timber you made the stand out of. But I thought, nah, why be normal? And this blackwood, it just has beautiful colour that you don't see until you put a finish on it. Oh, my, most of them, I was talking to my son this morning that hopefully he's going to come up um, later in the week. And he said, have you been practising pool? I said, yeah, we're getting pretty good at it. He said, oh, I'm really looking forward to coming up. And What did he say? I'm really looking forward to come up and damage some egos. <laughs> Little rat. Oh. And, and you oil the back where people don't see. And that's something I got from James Krenoff. You do, you finish where people don't expect it to be finished. And that way they get a lovely surprise. And you don't get that horrible, hey, speaking of horrible, hello. No, nah, be, no, nah, come on. Here you go. What? Oh, you poor old thing, aren't you? Come down well, you just say good day to everybody. They're all here. They're going where Sue. I said I, I locked her in the kitchen. Hmm? I told them I locked you locked you in the kitchen. Did you get what you wanted done, done? Yeah. yeah. It's got a glue dribble down there. It didn't work. I mean, it did work when I got up there. Right. Oh, isn't it? Well, I mean. Of course, yeah. The good thing and the bad thing is, if it worked when you got up there, you know there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So that's, Susie had a, what's a blood pressure blood machine? Pressure and every time she'd go and use it, it wouldn't work. And she took it back to the chemist where we bought it from, and of course it worked. Uh, but he did tell me to ring up Bishop Lace. Yeah. It would be a common problem, so. Oh, okay. Oh, Which good. I will do. Well. I've done Adele's chopping board. I'm just mm -hmm. oiling this, and then I'll put her board together. And then, hey, the newlyweds! How are you, Wes? You come in and blow Wes kisses. <laughs> no, she's that far away. She can't hit you. Oh. Well, I'll blow a kiss to Angie. Blow one to Wes. All right? Mwah. Yeah, no, mine's been. This is for Ange. Mwah! Good on you, girl. You look so happy, both of you. Congratulations. I wish I was there in person, but who knows? We might even meet one of these days. Absolutely. Yep. Uh. Happy holiday and Christmas to you too, Brenda. Oh, there you go. So they will come out of the works. Who have we got? CS, hi Sue, hi Sue. We send you our love. Andy says, I don't get that many. When I go on, you come down here. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> Got your own bus and everything, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've been talking about Lukey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coming down. Looking forward to that. 
And remind me, I've got to get him a um, wood burning kit too. Oh, okay. Because I just remember that. Alan was on, Alan does, you know Alan. Um, those beautiful wood burnings he does. Oh, okay. And I mentioned to Lukey the other day, would you like a wood burning? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And you too, Steve-o. It's a little load of Raven, but I don't know if she's on. Hi, Ray, if you were around. <laughs> All right. Is there anything like a crow mother? You're very around. Oh. Oh. All right. All right. I'm going to. You're going to what? Lie down. Lie down. I don't blame you. I just hope he put me a foot spa. Oh, did it work? Yep. Feel good? Did you put some Epsom salts in there? I put salts in there, yeah. Yeah. All right. I won't be long. Oh, I'll have a chat too since I've finished this. That, that's precariously positioned as well, isn't it? Could go, could fall in. All right, there we have, oh no we don't, haven't done this end. I oh, nearly made a liar out of me. There we go. I'll let that dry for a bit, and then I'll give it a another coat. <coughs> Got a little bit here I missed too. I'll give it another coat later on this afternoon. But, apart from the feet, there's the snooker cue stand. Have I done it all? Oh, I haven't done this top here. Oh, I've missed this bit. I'll put that over there and we'll get that chopping board up and running as well. That's a nice piece of timber, that. I like that. Oh, la da -de 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 -de. <whistles> Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that. I think it's gone all weird and flaky. It might have might have some timber in there, or the can could be breaking down on the inside. I don't know, but it's still working, which is good. Empty the bin. Just all go here, I tell you. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll have a chat while I've got a, something clean to lean on, and then we'll put that board together. You like tongue oil? I've just started using it. I, I do like um, Danish oil, but oh, it takes so long to go in. I actually want to start doing my beehive with tongue oil too, Julian, because it's um, you know all natural. Uh, whereas at the moment I'm using linseed oil, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Ethereal, it is a nice finish. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. That's what I love about that timber. It looks a bit innocuous to start. There's a word for the day, isn't it? To start. No, it looks a bit innocuous at the, when you start, but when you stain it, the, the colour just, oh, really comes out. It's lovely. Yeah, that's what I reckon, mate. I'll taste it and I'll tell you if it's past its use by Hey, John, you're back. Good. You didn't miss anything. Uh, 
Hi, Sue, looks good. Hey, are you referring to Susie? Looks good. <laughs> I'll tell her. I'll give, I'll give her a bath in tongue oil and tell her she, she looks good. Say yes, good day. I've already answered the question, but I didn't say good day, I said good day. Yeah, I saw that. Where's you got all the unpacking to do? How cool is that? Enjoy the experience. <laughs> I just think I told you to register your car and you give me that, BG. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, all right, where are we up to? Let's get this other thing put together. Ah! Oh, then I'm thinking I'm gonna have to um, go and get some tools. I'm thinking. Ah, where are we? Okie dokie, there's my cube. It can stay there. I'll get this one out. Oh dear. Uh. I tell you, I got asked. Anthony said to me yesterday, Papa, are you working Christmas Day or are you taking Christmas Day off? I said, I don't know. Oh, there's every chance I'll be in the shed with Uncle Luke. Oh, that's all right, providing you don't work. He's scared that I'm going to work and I'm going to die because I work so hard. I said, mate, if I didn't work, I would die, I tell you. Got to have something to do. Don't care what it is. Just keep on going. In case you wonder why I wrap those in paper, that's why they don't stick together. Okay, now I should have. Oh, I hate should have. There you go. One more bit of veneer that can go on there, and that can go to there, and that can do that from that and there. Let me get some clamps down. Oh dear. Oh. Yeah, I wish you could buy stuff you used to be able to buy. These clamps are brilliant. But they don't make them anymore. You can get similar ones, but not the same ones. Okay. What did I say that was? 320. Plus 40 is 360. Hmm, come in one, maybe. That'll do. All right. It's a good idea when clamping up. Make sure you've got all the clamps in the right position because when you're gluing up, you don't want to be spending your time organising your clamps while the glue's going off.
I don't know what happened there. Okay. All right. I'm, I hope I'm not intruding in anyone's lounge room because I'm actually poking these clamps clamps through the TV screen. <clears throat> the number of times I've done this and then ended up gluing them the wrong way is unbelievable. Here, four, five, six, seven. There you go. I did. I did it. That one's upside down. The middle one. That'll learn me, won't it? I won't be able to take that out. But thankfully, thankfully, that's Tasmanian oak and it's not prone to tear out, so it should be all right. But there you go. Made a mistake live after telling you what to do and make sure that you got it up the right way, and I didn't. That, that's very, very similar to me drawing those things up and going from one to, one to 100 and getting my numbers wrong. Okay, where is Ziglu, baby? No, oh. oh, it's not going to work. Where? Where, oh, where did I, oh, here it is. Did I put the glue? Oh. Oh. And these um, glue brushes, as I said, they're just very, very cheap ones. And I leave them submerged in a bucket of water the whole time, so they're generally all right to go. But they don't cost very much, so it doesn't matter if they rot. This is a veneer. So I leave this glue overnight, and then tomorrow, I'll, um, might even stream it, it'll be a quick stream. Oh, I don't know, I might make some legs for the snooker thing. And we will finish it off. Cut it to size, router an edge around it, put a brand on it, and an oil finish on it. The oil finish I, I use, I love. It's from um, Mind Your Beeswax in South Australia. I just ordered a heap of it the other day. It's arrived, so I'm happy to use that. And their mineral oil is like no other mineral oil I've ever used. It is just delightful to use. Okay, there we go, and we go, Kasplot. Put a blank one in here. Push that down, make sure it's all the way. Um, I don't know why well, I didn't mention it, but whenever you're doing chopping boards, always make them a lot thicker than you want them because then when it comes to machining them, any imperfections you've got, you can machine out.
I think this is cut at about 45. I want it finished about 38. Anywhere from, anywhere from 35 to 40 is a good finish size for me. Okay, and when you squeeze it, you don't want to squeeze it so tight it's going to squeeze the glue out, but you don't want to have it so loose that you don't get a good fit. So it's a fine line. Oh, say hey Ben, how are you? Long time no chat, mate. How'd you go with the storms on the coast? I noticed the young bloke's catching a few fish too. Good stuff. That's six knots in case anyone's wondering who I'm talking to. Uh, where are we? Steve, what is, is better tongue or linseed oil for outdoors? Look, I honestly don't know. Um, I honestly do not know. I'm going to go tongue oil on my beehives uh, as soon as I can get a good supply of it for outside. Uh, so I will let you know, but I do know I've got some beehives uh, boxes that I've literally thrown outside and they've been outside for maybe six months now on the ground. Uh, and the, the reason for that, I just want to see how good they are. I'll bring them in next time, but they're up in the shed at the moment. Uh, one has been in the weather, it only had one coat of linseed oil and it's sort of worn off, but it's still okay. And the other one that I've just haven't had a cover on it, it's just been left out in the sun and the rain. Where I thought it would split, it did. And I've since remedied that. But what I'm very proud of is the joints that I put on the corners haven't budged. So I'm really happy with those. And that's, um, that's my own design. So I'll bring those down later. So to answer your question, look, I don't know. I think tongue oil is thicker, so maybe tongue oil. But I'm changing to tongue oil very soon. I'll let you know in the long run. I don't, linseed oil is cheaper. But a bum. See if you just added your rattle yet. To, no, this one's not having a um, having a rattle. It's just a. Quick Christmas present for a lady up the road, but my signature ones with that carry the Stephen K uh, logo on them, yeah, they're all rattle boards. This one I didn't because it's just for the lady up the road. And it takes me about as long to put the rattle in as it does to make the board. I don't get notifications either, Ben. I just come down here and next thing you know, I'm streaming. So there you go. <laughs> oh, well, that'd be good if you're allowed in the country, John. I don't know if they're doing that at the moment. <clears throat> Where are we? Um... No, I haven't heard from Ren. I should give her a buzz. Oh, if I get off the down and think about it, I'll give her a buzz. I tell you what, John, if you make it out here, mate, come into the stream. There you go. What am I doing? Um, no, not this one, Ben. This is just going straight through the straight through the thicknesser. And if it comes out all right, I'll finish sand it. And if not, I'll put it through the drum sander. Yeah, this is a just a, a thank you to the lady up the road. But having said that, yes, apart from that one, I put it upside down, all the grains running the right way, so if I wanted to, I could hand plane it. 
Oh, that's nice, John. G'day, Art from LA. And greetings from Brisbane, Australia. Back at you, mate. Oh, good night, Wesley. 9am, that's good morning, mate. Yeah, I, I've seen you've been getting into the fish on Facey. Um, yeah, we've got some friends that are at uh, Palmy and they copped it real bad, apparently. Oh, and a Merry Christmas back to you too, Art. All you ever wish for and may you be safe, healthy and well and with people you love. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I could do that again. Theo, Theo um, as you know, he's doing a lot of work for Record International now. And oh, he said, I've got three streams on in one day. I said, mate, you're an idiot. And after it, he said, oh, it was good. He said, but I don't know if I want to do it again. <laughs> it does knock it out of you. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, that was it. And it's now one o'clock. I don't even know what time I started streaming, so I don't care. But that's it. I've, um, I'll show you the snooker rack. That is real. I'm really happy with that. I think I'm going to actually start selling these. Oh, so if you're in Australia and you want a snooker rack, I might list them later on. So that's, that goes like that. And you, where'd my cue go? Here we go. The cues just fit in there like that. There you go, like that. Um, the construction I used, I'll actually do a video of it and I might do a stream. All it is, it's one piece of timber. And if that lines up properly, it's one bit of timber with a force and a bit in it. And it can be used for so many different storage ideas. I have them for, um, actually, no, I haven't got my phone on me. For my um, 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 um. oh, wood turning chisel racks. So you can put wood turning chisel. I used to make fishing racks exactly the same. So we'll go through that process, if not this year, possibly not this year, next year. And um, yeah, once you develop it, you'll find ideas for it or in the kitchen for spice racks. Uh, what else? Um, Screwdrivers, anything. You just vary the size of the hole, but it's a brilliant little system. The key to it is the wedge on the bottom because whatever you put in there slides down and locks in to your first um, indice or indice or rebate, and then the top one lines up with it and holds it straight. So there you go. It's all good. So I'm going to be on before Christmas, but if those of you I don't see, have a fantastic holiday and a wonderful Christmas. And um, I hope you don't get too much coal, but I hope you get a lot of love. And you can be with people that you like being around, because that's what it's all about. I might, I might just do a really quick one on Christmas Day, just to say good day if anyone's around. If no one's around, I won't be offended. That'll be great. But I do know Christmas time can be a very lonely time for a lot of people. And so, uh, you know, if there's some people out there and they haven't got anyone to share their time with, I'm happy to come up on Christmas Day and just wish you all the best anyway and we'll have a quick chat. So until then, this is Steve. Thank you for your indulgence, your patience, your chat, your encouragement and enthusiasm. And... Pulling the shed door down on two projects today. Started the chopping board, finished the snooker rack. Look forward to having your company in the workshop again at the workbench very, very soon. In the meantime, this is me pulling the shed door down and saying remember to keep it sharp. And more importantly, keep it safe, look after yourself and check out Ben's works on YouTube. Um, yeah, he does some great stuff there. Be kind to each other. Look after yourself. I think I've said that. So good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, wherever you be in the world. God bless you, look after you. Take care. I'll catch you soon. Very, very soon, I hope. Bye for now.